Yo, it's been a long ass time, family. Welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make sourdough if you aren't an OCD chemist. Let's go. Keeping it delicious and simple today, you're gonna to need salt, of course, bread flour, a Dutch oven, filtered water. And, of course, a banneton, but this is not actually a banneton. It's a basket that I got for a dollar and a scarf. We should probably talk about my favorite stumbling block in this project, starter. I spent like 10 years trying to figure out how to make my starter work. Turns out you can just buy it from your local bakery for like $2. At least that's how much mine cost. You'll want to take it at this point after it's doubled up after you fed it. You're also going to want to use a digital scale when you're mixing up this initial mix. So this is your starter. Um, just poop it into your bowl, <laughs> throw in some salt. So you're really going to want to make sure that you use filtered water for this process. Otherwise, it's going to kill off your yeast and you're going to end up with sad, depressing flat bread. You're going to use a stainless steel chopstick to mix up the entire initial batch until it looks like this. So once your initial mix is satisfyingly murky, you're going to want to start throwing in your bread flour. And you do want to make sure that you're using bread flour, otherwise you won't have enough gluten. Um, and while gluten kind of gets a bad rap lately, it's what makes bread delicious and allows it to rise. It's the protein content, so you're going to want 13% flour for that. So no cheaping out on this part, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm going to save you a bunch of time here. This is a mistake that I used to make all the time. Um, and that is I'd start off trying to knead the crap out of the dough initially. Um, I wanted to get it to look like all the sexy dough that I saw online, and I thought you needed to start off that way. Turns out you actually don't. The only thing that I'm doing here is trying to incorporate all the little bits of loose flour into this main dough, and I'm stopping when it gets sticky and hard to handle, like you see here. Okay, so that looks good. Now it's time to send your dough to the fridge for a nap. Um, this part is basically where the hard work is over. Um, the rest of this is just kind of waiting, and we're just going to drop this off into the fridge for about an hour. You can go for up to a day, uh, and then I would recommend, of course, opening your fridge with your foot because that's the baller move. Um, and we're done. That's, that's it. We're going to wait for an hour now. Moving on to your starter. Now that you have some downtime, you're just going to try to get it onto your digital scale and replace all the starter that you use. So I use 50 grams of water followed by 50 grams of bread flour. Nice, simple, and easy. And while there's a lot of material out there that claims that you need to treat your starter like a baby and by that you need to feed it at the same time, like 8 a.m. every single morning, um, that's actually bullshit. I keep, <laughs> I keep my sourdough starter in the fridge all the time, uh, and I feed it once every three to four days. So here I'm just scraping down the sides with the rubber spatula because the insides get kind of disgusting, um, but <laughs> that's pretty much it. We've got the rubber band on here to indicate where you filled up your container so that you know when it's risen. Um, generally, we want to go for double rise, but even that part is not necessarily that important even a little bit of rise is okay. One thing that you do want to look out for is whether your starter is going hungry and it'll tend to accumulate a little fluid on top when it is. After that, we're done. So to give you a sense of just how forgiving this particular recipe is, it's been maybe two or three hours. So now that I pull the dough out, you might notice that it's considerably more elastic. What does that mean? That means that gluten has formed in your dough without you needing to work on it at all. Uh, there's something about the whole process of sticking it in the fridge that seems to work really, really well for that. And it actually makes the dough easier to work with as well. You'll notice that it's not sticky. What I'm doing here is laminating the dough. And that means that I kind of stretch it out and then I fold it into thirds and then I fold it into thirds the other way. And what you can see that I'm doing here and now is I'm folding the corners into a central piece. Then I'm just turning over the dough and then I'm kind of like scooping down with my hands into a glorious dough ball. At this point, you basically know the entire process in terms of handling the dough. You're going to need to do this once more, but first back into the fridge for about an hour. 
you can go up to a day again. Once more, the timing's pretty lazy here. Now we're back for our second lamination, which means that you'll be repeating the same process as before, but it doesn't actually need to be that precise. You're going to be gripping the dough around the edges, allowing it to kind of use its own weight to stretch itself out. And once it gets to a sufficient size, then I'm just rolling it up here like a burrito and then I'm <laughs> folding it in on itself one more time the other way. Uh, but the amount of folds and the way that you do this doesn't need to be that precise. So now that you've got a beautiful little dough ball, we're going to grab our banneton and rub some flour around the inside so that the dough ball doesn't stick. Then we're leaving it on our countertop for about six to eight hours. It can go a little bit over if you need to. And then into the oven. One eternity later. After a ridiculously low amount of effort, we're into the end game here. So while your bread was rising, in the last hour, you'll want to preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit with the Dutch oven inside. And from here, we just pop that bread ball into the Dutch oven. And then we score along the sides with a knife or a razor. Honestly, whichever one you have is good. And you don't even need to be that precise. You can see me here just like hacking away at the side with this knife. And it works out just fine. Pop the lid back on. And now we play the waiting game. Okay, time's up. Lid comes off. We're going to leave it in for the final bake. And there you have it, fam. Your efforts are now being rewarded in the most delicious way. This sourdough recipe is yielded bread that's better than some of the bakeries that I've gone to, where they charge you like $8 a loaf. It's crispy and crusty on the outside, and it's tangy on the inside. And if you got something out of this video, it would help me out a lot if you left a like, a comment, or subscribe to see more content. But in the meantime, here's some sourdough ASMR. <laughs>